Imagine that one day your child goes out to play in the backyard and you're doing dishes, you're doing work around the house, and all of a sudden there's an explosion. Bam! You immediately drop everything that you're doing and you run outside. You get a sickening feeling in your stomach and you find that your child is screaming because their leg has been blown off. This will be the future of Ukrainian civilians for the next 20, 30, or even 40 years. And why is that? That's because Russia and now the United States are using cluster munitions in Ukraine. There are over 100 countries that have banned the use of cluster munitions because they are essentially a large bomb that carries a bunch of little bombs, and the smaller bombs don't always explode upon impact, so they can be lost and then just lay dormant for decades until some civilian steps on it and they blow up. In February of 2022, the White House stated that the use of cluster munitions in Ukraine would constitute a war crime. But now, after arming Ukraine to the teeth for a year and a half, and purposefully and knowingly prolonging the war, the United States has run out of ammunition to give the Ukrainians, and so they're tapping into their stockpile of cluster munitions. Today we have this new story by Dave DeCamp that's also run at the Libertarian Institute, libertarianinstitute.org, where a Ukrainian general is talking about how, you, how cluster munitions have already been arriving in Ukraine from the United States. Now, to be clear, Russia has been using cluster munitions in Ukraine, and that is deplorable. But that does not mean that the United States should also join that low and send cluster munitions into the conflict. If this war doesn't escalate into nuclear catastrophe, we are going to be having cluster munitions exploding in Ukraine for the next four or five decades, just like they are still exploding in Cambodia, Laos, and Vietnam from the United States war in Vietnam. If you want to learn more about this, head on over to libertarianinstitute.org or antiwar.com.